So introducing Scott Johnson, I'm John Scott, which often confuses people, especially with anatomical dyslexia or people dyslexia. This is John Scott. Scott John. Scott Johnson. Where are you, Scott? <laughs> I'm here. Where are you, John? I'm in Ashto. Are you? Yeah. I'm in Nuffer. You're in Nuffer! <laughs> Sorry. That little bit of confusion there is I'm actually sitting in Ashto, which is the state of an asana called Padmasana. And it came from somewhere, and it's going somewhere, and it's doing something. And so the yoga that we practice, um, passed on to us by a beautiful man called Patabi Joyce, we fondly called Guruji, it's called Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga. The stigma of Ashtanga Yoga is that it is very dynamic and physical and very asana bound, but in terms of a, 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 a powerful male strength way. Um, there is definitely discipline. It is a very disciplined practice and yoga is a discipline. It's a discipline to train the mind. We do it quite vigorously through the body, but what we're saying about the quality is the narrative that they're used to is its only body. We're looking at a, a trinity and that trinity is the body, the breath and the mind. Practicing this particular practice you're having this, this con con relationship with your body, relationship with your breath, and always you're trying to bring it back to that point. Uh, what can happen is, again, why we didn't construct the classes this, this afternoon, so much about postures, it's about, really about creating the framework of how to practice. It's in that place of, of vulnerability that we're able to open up. And when we, when we open up, then, something magic happens. And so the way we uh, present the class is that we weren't going to take them through a guided session. We wanted to give them the gems of the practice, pass it to them for them to actually participate in the class themselves, not just with their body, but with their collective voice and their collective mind. So. Um, they, they actually experience something totally different to what they thought they were going to do. If you look at your own life, in a day, 96% of your time, you're probably in that place what I call just your ordinary self, or your selfish self, where everything's centered around everything that's maybe not going so well, or is going well. So you're either in the past or the future. In our yoga practice, what it brings is it sort of the time on the mat is to see if we can bring ourselves up to at least a three percentile, which is to be able to know that we have a discipline, that through that discipline we're able to uh, control ourself through our senses. Uh, normally speaking, our senses are often distracted, drawing our mind outwards. And then we are often, through that distraction, are seeking gratification of those senses, and often instant gratification becomes the principal aim of life. The yoga is to turn, or to gather those senses, rein those senses in and direct them in. So when the mind goes out, it's distracted. When you turn it in, when the mind's going in on itself, there's stillness. You have to bring yourself to a, to a stillness place for you to then transcend your individual self to find your undivided self.